now things are getting interesting, as we have a big week for both macro and company news ahead of us. Top down, watch out for the UK inflation numbers on Tuesday the 17th, and then the unemployment and wage growth numbers on Wednesday the 18th. Last month, inflation, as benchmarked by the Consumer Price Index, or CPI, reached 2.9%. The Retail Price Index, or RPI, reached 3.9%. And as we can see here, both numbers outpaced wage growth of just 2.1%, a figure which remains stubbornly low, even though the headline unemployment rate is just 4.3%, a 22-year low. And in addition, the employment rate of 75.3% is the highest since records began in 1971. It's all a bit odd. If inflation stays above its 2% target and wages do start to rise more quickly, then maybe, just maybe, Bank of England Governor Mark Carney will follow through on some recent hints about an increase in interest rates from their record low of a quarter percent. The Monetary Policy Committee meets on the 2nd of November and then the 14th of December. On the corporate front, 12 FTSE 100 firms are slated to publish a statement of some kind or other or hold an annual general meeting or an analyst meeting. They include Minor Rio Tinto on Monday the 16th of October, Troubled Educational Publisher Pearson on the 17th, Household Goods and Healthcare Giant Wreckit Ben Kaiser on Wednesday the 18th, and another minor, BHP Billiton, on the 19th. But for me, the company really capable of causing a fuss is Unilever when it reports third quarter results on Thursday the 19th of October. The Anglo-Dutch food to personal care and hygiene giant owns brands such as Knorr, Ben & Jerry's, Marmite, Persil, Domestos and many more besides, but it's very much under the microscope right now. As we can see here, the shares are still up actually by nearly 20% over the past year, a rate of progress which has easily exceeded the FTSE 100's more modest, though still welcome, 7.5% advance. The spike that you can see in February was the result of American firm Kraft Heinz offering just under $50 a share in cash and stock in a takeover bid, something like 40 quid a share, depending on the exchange rate, an 18% premium to the Unilever share price of that particular time. Now Unilever rejected the offer out of hand and Kraft Heinz promptly withdrew, but the approach clearly gave Unilever a shock. Chief Executive Paul Polman swiftly followed up with a strategic review and new financial targets. These included a plan to drive operating margins from the mid to high teens to 20% by 2020, the disposal of the spreads operation, which includes the flora margarine and stalk butter businesses, and also a review of the dual Anglo-Dutch legal structure, and finally, a 5 billion euro share buyback program. The buyback was launched in May, and the South African spreads unit was sold in September, but the market's still awaiting news on the rest of the disposal and the putative price. So, when it comes to the third quarter results, there'll be three things to watch in particular. First, any update from Pullman on the new strategy, new financial targets, and the spreads disposal in particular. Second, underlying sales growth. Unilever has a target of 3-5% to a year. As we can see here, it finally got back to the 3% level in the second quarter, having struggled to reach it for a couple of periods. The analyst consensus forecast is for 3.8% growth in the full year, which needs an acceleration to 4.5 for the second half. Also check out the mix between volumes and price. The brands mean Unilever is seen as a pricing power stock, and in the first half volumes were up 0.3, while prices were up 2.7%. Analysts are forecasting price increases of 2.4 for the second half and volumes up 2. To me, to be fair, the volume stuff sounds a little bit aggressive, especially after the summer's profit warnings from Mondelez and Reckitt Ben Kaiser. Both firms did blame the petty cyber attack, but both have been struggling to meet their own targets before then anyway. Third item to note is profits. There won't be a profit figure for Q3, but for the full year, analysts are looking for 9.6 billion euros for, the 20, for 2017 as a whole. So watch out for any comments on the overall outlook. That, by the way, implies a margin of 17.3% compared to the 20% target. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.